So it's just a quick video, as you know I've got the new Spectrum DX6 radio which I'm really liking which comes with uh, a little holder to take 4AA cells which obviously isn't great. I use the, um, the NIM Plus, the non self discharge rechargeables which uh, work really well, um, they last quite a long time and they don't. you can leave them unused for a month and then go back and they're still there which normal rechargeables don't. But I wanted to run a LiPo and Spectrum sell a LiPo but it's very expensive. Uh, and it has a built-in charge socket, but I wanted a cheaper solution. So I have um, this uh, the Turnagy LiPo in my DX8, and the plug is the same. So I figured that it that would probably work. So um, it does. If I uh, just flick out the uh, if I just flick out the uh, the first bit of foam, and then take out the AA holder, and carefully unplug that. Then the, uh, the the connection is the same. If I plug the uh, Turnagy LiPo in, there, and then that will turn on. There we go. That reads a high voltage, so you can go into the uh, settings menu, system setup, system settings, and if you set the battery to LiPo, then you can set an uh, alarm voltage. And then you have the display is correct, showing the amount of LiPo. Now the only issue with this is that there's no way to recharge that battery because you, there's no socket on the transmitter to charge from. So there's a couple of ways around that. Uh, the If you have a DX8, you could just plug the battery into your DX8 and just charge it in the DX8 and then swap it over. That would work fine. Uh, you can also get the Spectrum Make a Charge Lead for this connector, which has two banana plugs on which I will put the uh, part number in the description. So you can just buy that and just charge this on a normal NIM charger. But what I'm going to do, because I use the Selpo chargers that charge through the balance connector, I need a balance tap on this. So what I'm going to do is to take uh, one of the Turnagy, uh, or just the any 3S LiPo extension, which is a plug and a socket, and I just cut the uh, plug part off, and then I'm just going to wire that into this battery and then tuck that into the battery hatch. If I pull out the, there's a piece of foam at the bottom, which I just need to dig out. There. And then there's plenty of depth for that. So if I pop that in, I can wedge it in with this piece of foam and there's space down the side there so that I can pop the, that lead in there. That'll just run down the side and then I just pull this out to charge using my cell phone charger. Um, so that this is just really to show that. Okay, so if you, um, when you remove the heat shrink very carefully, there's a piece of blue tape over the end, and when you remove the, the end piece, you can see the contacts here. So I just hold these up here. And on the circuit boards, which have the voltage protection, so you want to not use those tabs, you want to use the battery tabs. The B plus is the positive on the second cell, and then on the first cell, I've used the ground connection, and the end of that tab is the center tap for the balance connector. So then I just pop the uh, tape back over to carefully cover up the contacts exactly as it was before and make sure that it's covering up all those contacts so there's nothing exposed so it's, there's no risk of anything shorting out. Then I'll take the blue tape which is just cosmetic and just wrap that over. So then lastly you just slide it back into the, uh, into the heat shrink. So I've got the original power feed from the battery and then I've got my balance tap that I just added. And I'll just double check that. And that shows fine. So then if I get my radio back. I can drop that in. The lid goes on and that's super neat. So there we go to charge it. I just have to flick that out and plug it into my charger. And then when it's not charging, that just tucks in there. So yeah, and then uh, let's just check that still works. No 
There we go, see there, set to LiPo, and the alarm voltage is 6.5, so I just pop that up to, uh, I think I'll pop it up to 6.8, just so I've got a little bit of time. I mean, the current voltage is 7.8 and that's not even fully charged, so it's plenty of life in that. I find with the DX8, it, I mean, I fly probably uh, several times a week and the battery life is ridiculous, so I don't think it'll be an issue. But uh, yeah, so that's much neater and cheaper than uh, buying the Spectrum battery. Hope that's useful.